right. Welcome, everyone. This is this week eight. <laughs> I cannot believe I had eight moms come on and share their journey. All of them have been so beautiful. Each one is very unique in its own way. And then we have Miss Fola Shade here, who is offering a different perspective because she wants to talk about co-parenting. <laughs> I think that's amazing. And I just I'm I'm curious to hear her story and how that is working for her. But before we get into the questions, I always ask my moms to share a little bit about who you are and what you like to do as an individual outside of being a mom. Okay. <laughs> so hi you all. I'm Fola Shade. <laughs> Um, most people know me for Fola Shade Speaks on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I am a mother. I am a marketing and branding expert. Pretty much what I do is I um, been in the industry, marketing and wow. branding industry for about seven years. Um, I help people develop their products and services. Mm -hmm. um, and I also make sure that um, everything is pretty much set up from A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the whole entire process as mm -hmm. far as starting your brand. So I'm pretty much the visionary and the creative director all in oh, one wow. for uh, those. <laughs> for like different companies? Yes, like different yeah. companies and brands that want to set up yeah. or people that are already in businesses. I help them um, pretty much behind the scenes get the things done. Wow. The branding and the marketing and resources mm -hmm. and the tools that ne they're needed in that business, I help them with that. You have a pretty powerful position. Yes. <laughs> People are depending on you. Yeah. That's why I'm like trying to get out there now. I'm yeah. like, got to get out there. That's amazing. Do yeah. you, do, is, is that something you always wanted to do or it's kind of like the position God put you into as you started to grow? So actually, um, God gave me a vision years ago, mm -hmm. um, back when I had my daughter mm -hmm. um, in 2017, I actually yeah. went to school um, straight out of high school when I graduated, went yeah. to Old Dominion University. Wow. And um, I decided I had like some type of separation, separation anxiety. I don't know what it was, but I ended up leaving <laughs> and going to VCU. And at that time, um, God had gave me a vision, which my original co um, company mm -hmm. is called Vision Connect. Okay. So um, it all makes sense to what I'm doing now um, yeah. far as the agency that is being developed within mm -hmm. the networking, the marketing, the yeah. branding, and how I actually uh, been like yeah. doing things naturally, helping gotcha. people without money, you know, mm -hmm. just tailor it to my gifts. It's something I've always been doing, but I've yeah. always did different things and invested into myself to explore yeah. What is it that Fola loves? Okay. So that I feel is, like that is wonderful. You feel like what? I'm sorry. I just feel like it's finally coming out. Mm. Like I feel like I'm finally walking into my purpose. Yeah. I'm finally like getting out of my shell mm -hmm. and just like, shut it. You yeah. got this. Just go. Because <laughs> people, like you said, people yeah. is depending on me. So I got to right. make sure, you know, I do my due diligence and do what I have to do to make sure I'm in position <laughs> yeah. to help these people out there that needs me. That is yeah. beautiful. She has she has a really powerful position where, like we said, people are really depending on her and she is getting it happen. She is making it happen yeah. for herself. So how are you able to do all of that and take care of your beautiful daughter? So <laughs> one of the biggest things I always say um, is it takes a village to raise one child. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I used to be like super close to like yeah. super attached to my daughter mm. to the point. I feel like because like I was yeah. a stay at home mom at one point, yeah. um, it kind of like made me overprotective. Yeah, in a sense. it did because yeah. I was just super close to her. Mm. But as I began to go on a journey to figure figure out like how to implement mm -hmm. and how to figure out how to include my daughter in what I was doing, mm. it began to get better. Right. Now I'm gonna go back to the village part because her dad, you know, he mm. also wanted to be a part of her life. 
which is a good thing. Yes. <laughs> because, you know, I never, had, like, I come from a family where, you know, our fathers were absent. Well, our fathers wasn't absent, but, like, my sister's dad, mm-hmm. they, his, their dad died. Oh, and then sorry, my, sorry yes, okay. My dad, um, he's in Jersey, but he just, he wasn't never there. there you yeah. Know? He's just, wasn't there. So, um, with that being said, mm-hmm. I feel like with us breaking generational curses with mm-hmm. my daughter's dad, he's like, his dad wasn't there. Yeah. He's like, I got to be a part of my daughter life as well. Yeah. So he made it a priority. Mm-hmm. But when we decided to split, that's when things kind of got rocky. got rocky too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, you mentioned that your father <clears throat> was absent in your life. Um, how is the relationship with you and your mom? Me and my mom is good. Like okay. we're, um, for me, like she's the closest thing to me. Like wow. she's the only thing I have um, yeah. other than my dad. Cause I used to cry like, where's my dad? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I used to be like, why my dad not here? Because, uh-huh. you know, I just had that issue. Like I had yeah. that little girl issue. I was a daddy's girl. Yeah. Um, for real, because <laughs> my mom, like a little tip, my mom <laughs> had to fight to get me back when I was like about a couple of months. I was in London for a whole year with my dad. Oh, so my wow. dad took me. We're Nigerian, so my yeah. dad took me. Oh, okay. To well, my mom, my mom is not Nigerian, but my daddy is. Okay. So, but he took me to London with his family, and um, pretty much my mom had to like fight yeah. to get me back for a whole year. Wow. So, I feel like with that, mm-hmm. kind of like, what is the word that I'm looking for? That experience that I had with mm-hmm. him, it kind of gave me that yeah like touch with him like right. I, I actually knew my dad right. so it's like growing up as a little girl i was just always like where's my dad where is he at mm-hmm. like my mom like just <laughs> get over get it over. <laughs> so, like get over it my and my sister uh-huh. my little sister she'll be looking at me like how could you even be crying over somebody that you ain't even see? Like yes. my other sister, we got the same daddy too. Uh-huh. She'd be like, girl, you need to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, how could you be crying over somebody you don't even know? And I'm like, I yeah. do know my dad. My dad, I know my dad. Mm-hmm. Like my dad, oh, I'm sorry. No, my dad is the one that actually raised, I mean, that actually, you know, yeah. you, created me yeah, in a way. You had so that bond with him. Yes. Even though you were one years old, you would never forget that experience. Like I would you said. Never. So what caused him to not want to be in your life after that? Because he had you for a whole year and then your mom came and got you back. And what did, what made him decide like he didn't want to be a part of your life anymore? So, you know, I asked him that and mm-hmm. he kind of like put the blame on my mom. Okay. He was just like my mom moved, you know, up and moved. We were from yeah. Jersey. So she he was saying like my mom left and got away from him. And yeah. I'm like. Well, we're going to six hours away. You still mm-hmm. can make a way. Yeah. You know, no matter what. Right. Make a way to get your kids. Yeah. But um, I remember at some point we were going to his house, mm-hmm. but my dad is so strict. Mm-hmm. At one point, my dad, like, hit me. Mm. And um, after that, yeah. it was a big thing with me. My mom probably was like, she's never sending me back because yeah. once he hit me, my mom won't go on for that, yeah. you know, because... No, I totally get it. Yeah. You don't know... That's like, your you daughter. Know, yeah, and it's like, you hitting me, he hit me only because I moved my hands like this. Oh. And... You um, tried to say you were sassy. You was yeah, being, like, I'm just, like, yeah. being rude, Attitude. but not knowing Yeah. he don't really know me like that. Yeah. This is how I actually How old talk. were you when he did that to you? I was about, like, 10. Oh yeah, you was a teenager, so yeah, you were preteen, so you definitely remember. Yeah, yeah, I was old enough, and I just remember him hitting me, and I'm mm-hmm. like, "You just hitting me!" Like, and then yeah. I call my mom, crying, telling her about it, and after that, I never seen my dad. Like after yeah. she never sent us back, so we were going to Jersey mm-hmm. at one point to see him. So my mom was like, "That's a, that's it. Yeah, um, you ain't gonna, you ain't gotta worry about seeing them no more." <laughs> I, I don't think blame she you. Cut yeah. that tie. Like, uh-uh, yeah, don't even worry about it. Yeah, 
is you're not gonna put your hands on her and you ain't even develop, develop a relationship with her to mm-hmm. even understand mm-hmm. who know, she who is who i am right right so wow it was yeah that was kind of like a journey i'm sorry that happened to you because i'm pretty sure if, if that incident wouldn't have happened y'all probably could have developed a more further relationship with each other but I do believe that God make no mistakes, you know. Yeah. He probably would have continued to be abusive, you know, not putting that on him, but sometimes when they start, they don't know how to stop. Right. Yeah, so and it's good that your mom protected you from that. She did, and I feel like, you know, that kind of affected me, mm-hmm. you know, just going throughout the years. I actually, you know, decided to take upon myself to, revisit mm-hmm. my dad to forgive yeah. him because you know when you walk walking on this earth with like burdens or yes. something that's on your heart that you know made you angry mm-hmm. but you kind of never talked about it yeah it's like it don't help you as mm-hmm. a as an individual to grow agree agree so it doesn't i feel like that pain and like wanting my daddy's love so much and mm. to be presented with the the hit yeah um it, it hurted me you yeah. know it hurted me in my life it, it actually affected me and i just i didn't realize how much it affected mm. me consciously mm. but it did it, it hurted me so much to the core yeah <laughs> so but now i'm finally like being able to talk about the yeah. things without like having so much like emotion emotions yeah, yeah. It's like it's okay like for me i'm like it's all right to cry like oh, i get a cry baby's tear yeah. sometimes but um, not i don't even think about it most of the time so right. it's just like i'm glad you were able to heal from that and w- what makes it more better is you had a great mom so it was easier to kind of you know not get over the emotions but understand like okay i have one absent parent well yeah Yeah. one absent parent and one parent that's here you know available to cater to me so are you the youngest are you the oldest so i'm the fifth out of six Mm. so it's six girls my mom has six girls so wow my mom had to literally raise all of us as a single mom Mm and find a way to balance her life yes. so she worked a lot she had like two to three jobs mm. so sometimes she wasn't even able to like pay attention to yeah to y'all what we what yeah. we had going on because she was too busy working yeah she had, she to, take had to, to take care of us so it's like you kind of had to learn like certain yeah. things mm-hmm. on our own to figure out like okay what is it that Ola, yeah. like, right. how is she going to develop? I know how my mom is. Yeah. She's a strong, black, beautiful woman. She's going to make mm-hmm. sure she do everything by all means to make sure we're good and have food yeah. on the table, the basics. As yeah. um, far as mentally, you yeah, know, exactly. that was the thing that was missing on my mm-hmm. end for me. I'm not yeah. sure what my other sisters, maybe they, they have a different mom. Yeah. But for me, I could speak mentally. Um, I never really had that. Yes. person that I can like talk to like hey you know yeah. without being judged or feeling mm-hmm. like they don't tell your business yeah or like yeah. I don't even want to tell my business because you just as soon as I say something you're going to say something to your sister yeah. <laughs> or you're going to say it to my sister did you like, not have a mind. good bond with your sisters I do I have a good bond but mm-hmm. like they're older so it's okay. like I just feel like the bond that we have Mm -hmm. is like what's the word um it's like age the age yeah it's an age gap yeah it's an age gap so i never really felt like they could relate to you right yeah because they were older yeah okay but they could relate to me because they is older but i know they were waiting for me to like come talk to them but i just never did because Mm. i feel like they might have been was going to judge like I see how they were with my mm-hmm. other sister I'm like if, if that's how they is <laughs> I ain't telling them the thing. <laughs> no I don't but blame you. <laughs> I do tell my sisters like here and there um mm-hmm. certain little things but my little sister I'm more closer to her yeah um 
and we pretty much share like yeah I barely even talk to them but it's like we wow. have this you have a relationship like, a relationship but it's distant yeah it's like yeah we just don't really talk about it as much as we should like mm -hmm. and I feel like that's a generational curse that yeah. was planted rooted in the family mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff that was under the rug you really ain't get to discuss because everybody's yeah. scared to say something or right. you know like, right they don't want to like, avoid a conflict nothing. yeah avoid it's a, a, yep it's another thing also yep so how old were you when you had your daughter i was 20 okay I had my daughter okay. so um once i, I had her in 2017 oh nice I was 20 yep and um it was so funny mm -hmm. how I had her because I, I didn't even know I was pregnant. I was 11 weeks already. Oh, when wow. I found out she was in my belly. Yeah. So. Um, how was I, that experience? Oh, I, I remember like yesterday. I literally. So I knew like mm -hmm. in my heart, I was like, some ain't right. But I never really paid attention too much because mm -hmm. I was still going to school at VCU, um, it was such a bittersweet moment yeah. because I had like planned, like a whole plan. That's why when you write your plans, I'm like, <laughs> that ain't true. <laughs> said, right. I want to have my baby at 25, <laughs> but I am 20. So yeah. what's going on here, Lord? You better let me know. <laughs> but um, I remember like, you know, finding out and I was actually with one of my best friends. Um, I was talking to her and she was telling me like, you know her story or something and it sounded so mm. familiar like i think she was pregnant at the same time as me and yes yeah, she was she was pregnant mm -hmm. and she was like girl you better go get a test i was like what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> right what, what i was like hold about? on <laughs> what you talking about <laughs> look don't play right now at this time we driving i'm like we having like this woman to woman conversation she's like yes girl go get you a test we about to go to dollar tree go get you a test uh-huh we get the Dollar Tree. I'm so scared because this lady just told me go get a test for a prank. So I'm like, oh my God, I never even thought like that. <laughs> I was still having my yeah. um yeah. monthly cycles and everything. Wow. Um, so I went in the store, we walking through, I'm like, dang, where's the pregnancy test at? Like <laughs> we, have, we are having the time of our life because I'm already funny. Like Nat, uh -huh. she was funny. Yeah. So my best friend, she laughed like, "Shay, get the test." <laughs> and I'm like, "Hold on, I need two. Like, I need two to test." So yeah. I, I ended up just grabbing the test. We paid for it. I don't take the test right away. We ended up going to her house. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, I, as soon as I get into the house, I'm like, okay. It's time. <laughs> what is about to happen? <laughs> so I literally go into the bathroom. It's like I already know how to do everything because at this point I'm yeah, familiar with like uh -huh. peeing in the cups. But this right. thing was so, I'm like, hold on, how you do this? So, <laughs> yeah, them Dollar Tree breakfast sandwiches are different. <laughs> I was like, let's give me a, best give me a cup. So I remember, I just remember the whole story. She like, Oh shoot! I do got to get you a cup because you got to pee in a cup or whatever. So, yeah, I ended up peeing in the cup, and um, took the little squirt thing and squirted yeah. it on the little thing <laughs> on the test. Uh -huh. I turned it around because I really didn't want to see it. I turned that thing over, and she walked up. She was like, "You pregnant?" <laughs> She gonna tell me I'm pregnant. <laughs> like she already knew I was pregnant. Yeah. We didn't even look at it yet. She's yeah. like, You pregnant? <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> I turned it around. It was two lines on the thing. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you started crying. I was shouting. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Were I'm you pregnant. afraid? I was super, I had this like excitement, but like emotional, it was super bittersweet. Yeah. It was one of the most bittersweet moments in my life because like, I wasn't mm. even like crying or nothing. I was literally just shouting like, yeah. oh my God, like, like <laughs> oh my God, I'm really pregnant. Like, girl, what is you, did you curse me? Like, yeah. I'm like to my friend, she like, 
what are you gonna do? Like it this sounds <laughs> don't move. First she tell you she's she pregnant. Me. Now she making you figure it all out. <laughs> she's like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I don't know. Mm. And this is when life changed for me because then mm-hmm. I told my baby father. Yeah. First. I told him first. I was like, I'm pregnant. What'd he say? He was just like calling me. Like he called me. <laughs> and I was like, he's like, what you talk what you mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm pregnant. And that's when I ended up leaving. And uh-huh. we ended up going I ended up going to his house or whatever. And we ended up like talking about it. His mom already somehow knew I was pregnant. She's like, I knew it. I knew you was pregnant. I been knew you was pregnant. Girl, funny how the mom you, su- the, you just, supposedly already know. Already, she just knew I was already pregnant. She's like, yep. I said, so when you was gonna tell me I was pregnant? That's what I'm saying. I could have been there. I could have been if I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was like, yep. I knew you was pregnant. I ain't tell me nothing. But um, mm-hmm. we ended up discussing some stuff. We ended up like. I don't do abortions. Like, I don't do yeah. abortions. Okay. I was like, I don't do abortions, so I'm not ready for right. I can't. I don't see myself, like, killing my baby yeah. at that, you know, time. And Nick was excited. Like, he was just like. Yeah, he was happy. He was like, we got it. Like, I'm like, we got it. We don't even got our own place. No, nothing. <laughs> we don't have nothing. But, like, you know, my yeah. mind thinking, like. We don't got it. We don't have money. We don't have finances. We don't have anything. How do we have it? We don't have it. <laughs> I'm all over. Like, yeah. I didn't even finish school. Like, we don't have it. Like, so my mind just, like, started thinking like that. And then I called my mom. And then I, after I called my mom, she was like, mm. you better. She was like, she gave me the worst decision. She was like, you going to the clinic. And so I was uh-huh. like. Oh, she told you that she was going to take you to the clinic. She was like, "Which are you going to get rid of it or something? I was like, no, nah, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like I'm supposed to get rid of my baby. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like She's like, well, okay. And we hung up and I started crying. I started crying after I spoke to my mama. And then um, I ended up keeping my baby. One yeah. of the best things that happened to me in my whole entire life. Wow. Like August twenty fourth, twenty seventeen, my life changed forever. Like I will never forget. Like <laughs> that's how she beautiful. Just came into the world as the sweetest angel mm. you could ever meet. Like she just, oh my god! I'm like, what if I would have literally took my mother's advice? Yeah. On this, did you? I would have lost this. Yeah. Did you start crying after you got to the phone with your mom because you felt like she wasn't supportive to you having the baby? Yeah, I feel like I was mm-hmm. just crying because, like, she didn't understand yeah. at that moment. Mm-hmm. And then, to make it worse, I went to the um, doctor Yeah. after that. They told me. I was so far out. I'm 11 weeks. they mm-hmm. like, yeah, she's already here. <laughs> like Too late now. She's here. <laughs> I'm like, she's here. She wasn't going to tell me nothing. I wasn't sick, no nothing. I was just doing everything yeah. regular. I was actually pregnant while my birthday was um there. I was I had a little wine and everything. I'm like, mm. oh, hold on now. Yeah. <laughs> I was in there the whole time growing. And I, didn't, I was small. My stomach didn't blow up until I was mm-hmm. like eight months. But yeah, that pregnancy... Um, my baby father, he was more like supportive yeah. on that end. I didn't go through like mm. a rough pregnancy, thank God, because he already knew like yeah. in his mind, he like, I got to do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. And then we together, we working together like on a whole different level of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So we already like doing a lot in a lot. So we're like, we got to figure this out. Yeah. But um, we and ended then both up- we got young. Yeah, we were young, and and then the plans that we had, yeah, at least that I had, <laughs> it literally just went left. It went mm. all the way somewhere else, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, I'm looking at the paper like this. You look at this. This ain't what that say. It didn't say have a baby. <laughs> it no, it don't have have a baby anywhere. Honestly, but right. in my mind, I'm like, 
I want to have a baby at 25. Okay, you felt more stable and more ready to have a child at 25. I feel like that would have been my like maturity level of yeah. Where I'm like I'm ready yeah. to have a kid. Yeah. But mentally, physically, emotionally, mm. I'm just starting to figure out who Fola is. Yeah. So I got I try to figure out who another kid is, and yeah. that's when when I had her. My life changed because I literally had to figure out who I was at the last minute, mm. um, which is in this journey now. Yeah. You know, um, I get to that, but mm. I literally, when when she was born, my I just everything was Kalani, 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 <laughs> Kalani, 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 like me. Yeah, Let no me more you. Pull, completely gone. <laughs> I was gone. I, I don't even know. I literally let myself completely go um, into that mode where I, all I knew was to make sure my kid, you know, yeah. and I still do the same thing, but I didn't know I had to prioritize me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I'm was that difficult myself. for you? It was. It it was very difficult. It actually, I'm just starting to really get that balance yeah. of, oh, this is what it's supposed to be mm -hmm. like. Like. I supposed to feel whole as a mother. I supposed yeah. to feel like my child's supposed to see me healthy, yeah, not broken. I mean, of course they're gonna see that, but she's seen so much brokenness. She's seen so much mm. emotions and pain, mm. and she had to endure so much because I went through so much with not just her father, but with my family and everything. Yeah. So it's just like happen to endure all of that and then show yeah. her that it was just like oh my god like what's going on mm -hmm. like it was just this is not the life that I really intended yeah. my for my child this is why I never I'm like that's why I didn't want to have a kid you know because yeah, it's like at that age anyway because you know I you already kind of knew that I figured cool. like yeah I knew like I'm like I'm picture I picture this life that, that I want to get my child I don't ever mm -hmm. want to have to you know, not be there for my daughter's yeah. important events and important sports stuff that she does. Like, I have to be there. Yeah. So part of that, in that early on stage, I began to develop and create mm -hmm. a way to be there for my kid. Yeah. And um, that's what I did. And I'm still living like that, but it just was difficult because imagine people that don't see the vision that I'm mm. seeing coming and get you like, get a job. Do this. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Have this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Shoving different Just, things down your throat. And it's not it's not your vision, like you said. It's, it's not, not your vision. It's not my vision that God gave to me. It's mm. not it's not helpful. It's not mm. helping me as much as you think it's helping me. Mm -hmm. It's breaking me. Because yeah. I'm like, this person don't the person I really love don't see see yeah. it. Like yeah. they don't see they don't the vision. I'm like Cause when, they what? Cause what? You doing what they want you to do would just make them feel better. But what about you? What you know, about me? yeah. People don't don't realize that. Like, what about me? What about how I feel? Even though it's against what you believe in, mm -hmm. it's still not what's best for me at this time. So right. I definitely get where you're coming from. I can relate a hundred percent on that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I had to go through mm -hmm. in that journey, um, and that for me was hard because mm -hmm. like now getting to me and her me and my daughter's dad had yeah. been together for at least three years before we split mm -hmm. so my life changed once we broke um, up broke up mm. and um it was difficult did you become a single mom then or yeah y'all always was co-parenting i became a single mom um mm. because he was there for me like he was he was there for me and her all the time. So I was yeah. used to him being there, but he was working, doing his thing. And I was always at home. Mm -hmm. Like at one point I was like a little stay at home mom. Cause I didn't have to uh, do, do no work yeah. like in working. Cause he wanted me to just stay home. Make sure I take care of Kalani, which I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, And I enjoyed that moment. I enjoyed spending so much time with my daughter. Honestly, uh, I'm glad I didn't have to go to work and yeah. like, take all that time from my child that mm -hmm. she needed me the most like she needed me at this journey the 
birth and all the way up to the three years old, mm. like she needed me yeah. at that time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm so glad I was able to give her that because once we split mm -hmm. because of some things that my daughter dad had showed me, yeah. um, I decided to end the relationship. End this, end the relationship. I mean, yeah. He proposed to me and everything. I said yes, but I called it out because it just was some some habits and some things that I was afraid of that I didn't want to show our daughter. Yeah. And I was just like, this has to end. Like, mm. this has to end. And um, it was one of the toughest things. We talked about it and everything. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is it. And from um, there on, it, it never came back together. But what I can say, at that time when it was, mm. this was it, mm. I, I was going to school in um, Charlotte, aesthetician school. Okay. And um, in these years, I went through the worst time of my life because I had to keep coming back and forth from Richmond here to Charlotte. because co-parenting wasn't co-parenting. It was, mm. it was just like yeah, hell. Oh wow! It was scary. It was like what made it? What made it feel that way? Was it him and? It was like a bunch of people. Him included him the most because mm -hmm. forget everybody else but anything with his trait of him like giving me that thought process of you're gonna try to take my kid away from me oh okay. was the worst okay thing to ever do to a mom that's trying to like go through school and get her thing yeah. together you're not really understanding mm -hmm. but you being selfish in a way to figure out how you feeling, but you're not thinking, how is she feeling? Yeah. What's her story? You're not even mm -hmm. bothering to see what is her mental like? Yeah. What, how is she feeling in this process? I'm already alone. I'm raising Kalani by myself. I'm doing yeah. a lot of stuff that is new to mm -hmm. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was a journey in the beginning mm -hmm. until, because I'm a very expressive person, when it, especially when it comes down to my child. Yeah. Um, I don't care what it is i'm gonna talk about my like i'm gonna right. tell you how i feel about my kids so i'm right. like exp expressing everything how i'm feeling like hey like you know this is not good for my daughter's you know mental mm -hmm. like she's seeing me broken she's seeing me hurt she we already going through what we going through as far as the breakup <laughs> you is know is that why he tried to take her yeah because like, you were going through some things mentally yeah he was just mm -hmm. He felt like he wasn't stable at that time. Mm -hmm. okay. He was feeling like I didn't have it together to, like, I feel like raise the kid, raise our child. Nobody And does. then I'm like, you, we both in the same situation. Yeah. So it's just like, but um, overall, we began to get the court involved mm. um, because it seemed like we couldn't get it together. Yeah. So at yeah. some point, this became a a fight for mm -hmm. one. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, we're not about to be playing this total war game. Yeah. <laughs> that is not healthy for a child. She's going through that mentally. She's seeing yeah. her parents go through right. one of the toughest time in, in, in the journey. So there she's looking at us. And she's like, what is wrong? Like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> My mom like, and dad is doing? going crazy yeah, right now over like, me. <laughs> she's like, she talking more sense, have more sense. She's like, why y'all just can't be cool? Like, I'm like, you know, ain't that right. some? Like, she ain't like, that some? She's <laughs> like, is y'all okay? Because, like, what, yeah. what's wrong? Like, why y'all can't just be friends? Like, she's like, yeah. why y'all can't just be cool? Like, mm -hmm. I remember Lonnie saying that. I was dying left. I'm like, no, you got more sense than us. Like <laughs> we over here going going back and forth for two, trying to figure out like, right. ah, you ain't taking my kid. He thinking I'm yeah. taking my kid from him, and it's like we both had the same mindset okay. of how both feeling like you had to protect. You had to protect yourself from him. He had to protect himself from you. Yes, and he wow. was, and then the kid was like the only thing that we had mm -hmm. could kind of like. He's like, you ain't taking my child from me. Yeah. And he like, I, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not yeah. finna take your child from me because I already know. But I'm also saying you ain't finna take my child from me. Yeah. So 
court. I definitely court. <laughs> so when y'all went to court, did the judge grant joint custody where so I yep. So what I did was I we came up to an agreement. Uh-huh. And I was um like, you know, I'm gonna have physical custody, mm-hmm. big physical joint custody, and then he'll have the other custody. So where I kept her. Yeah. And um he'll get her, you know, whenever he wanna get her as far as like our visitation yeah. rights or whatever. How was visitation? So he get her on like weekends or he get her because I know some parents, but they have it where, oh, he get her for a whole month and then she returned back home to you. So what is the visitations for him and your daughter? So the visitations with him was in the beginning Mm -hmm. was weekends, every other weekends because I was in Charlotte Okay, and he was here. Mm -hmm. So it was no way for him to like get her every single weekend. Right. But um it began to change, like things begin to change as like now I have Kalani by myself. So I'm like trying to figure out yeah. my life and trying to figure out like how am I gonna do this by myself mm-hmm. with barely no support in Charlotte with Kalani. So you currently live in Charlotte? No, not now. Okay. I'm, oh I'm this here. was okay, okay. This was Two years ago when I was in Charlotte. So what made you go to Charlotte? Um, I just moved. I, oh, that's another story. So I got out of mm-hmm. here because um, I was going through a lot here with this man that was very like narcissistic. Was that's your boyfriend? It like was ex boyfriend. It was really weird. I can't. I don't even know what to call him. Situation. But it was a man that preyed on me. And he ended up getting me and mm. um he just ended up turning my life into a yeah shamble pack like it was my sister's like best friend so he ended up like at one point i was living with my sister i never forget he came in the room and like touched me but he was drunk i don't know if he was drunk whatever but was he I, super older than you yeah he was older he was older he's like 35 or something okay like okay yeah he was older than me at the time i was only like 22 like 35 right oh yeah but or 24, my bad. Mm-hmm. But either way, he's just super older. Yeah. And then he just ended up coming into my life at the time period of everything that I'm going through. Yeah. It was like I never had a break. He came and then just ruined my whole entire life. Like, mm. I learned a lot, though. It, yeah. It was a lot of stuff that I had to learn and see yeah. because I feel like for me, I was like, looking for that that man manly mm-hmm. love or yeah anything anything that was manly to love me i was like just love like it was just yeah okay whatever like instead of just like mm-hmm. loving myself like yeah. love who like who is for love you like girl yeah chill like it's gonna be okay and um i broke out of that situation and i had mm-hmm. to because he was stalking me Oh wow. And he began to like get very aggressive with me as well, put his hands on me. Um, so I left mm. due to my protection. Yeah. And I went to Charlotte and I ended up starting a journey there. I ended up going to esthetician school yeah. there. And um that's how I ended up in Charlotte mm. with my sister as well. She was there. And then my yeah. cousin was there as well. So it was just us three and then me trying to raise Kalani by myself. Yeah. It was like no, I, I'm sure it that was had hard. to be super scary for you, you know, ha- having to deal with the things that you had going on with your child's father. And then, you know, you getting involved with another man and finding out he was a whole different person and feeling like you had to run away from all of that due to him. So where is he currently? Like, is he still here in Richmond or? Yeah, I think that guy's still. Here. Oh, you talking about the guy? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's still here, but I don't know where he okay. is. That's because good. um I just blocked him. Just yeah. got him out of completely out of my life. Mm-hmm. Um that's another story for another day. Yeah, like absolutely. He, um yeah. I have a whole story for him. But yeah, he's okay. here. <laughs> okay, okay. So I wanted to ask you because I we're gonna backtrack a little bit. Because okay. <laughs> okay. a lot has been said uh, um did you have any complications with your pregnancy or was you like completely healthy with your daughter? 
Um, no, I didn't have any complications. Mm -hmm. Only thing at the end, I began to get like very, uh, I began to get in pain. It okay. was like a lot of pain and I was feeling, I think that's just because I was about to have yeah. her. So, but Probably other than dilated. that, I didn't have, I got yeah. bigger, of course, that's what babies do. Yeah. Um, but no, no pain. I went through her, the pregnancy, like I found out at 11 weeks that I yeah. was pregnant. Um, oh, I did it. I had a lot of spit, spitting saliva. Really? It was the worst. <laughs> I had to carry like a water bottle with me. For real? Just to spit because I'm going to spit every second, every minute. I'm going to be spitting in a bottle because it was that much saliva coming out of my mouth. Oh, my God. I was stressed out. That was the <laughs> only thing I remember. Okay. About that pregnancy that just was so miserable. I hated it. Right. But, yeah. Um, other than that, no pain. That was just from um, being nauseous. And yeah. Can't throw up or nothing like that. So. Right. Absolutely. Of that is crazy. I never heard <laughs> that before. But, hey, anything is possible when you're pregnant. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> These Anything. babies will bring out the most craziest things in our bodies. Yes. And we don't even understand it. No, for real. So you talked about the challenges you encountered um, around co-parenting. So how is the relationship between you and the child's father now? Like, are y'all co are y'all good at co-parenting now? Yes. Um, okay. I think it has gotten better mm -hmm. overall due to... Mm -hmm. um, well, now he's he has to be better because he has other kids, you know. So, oh, okay. And he has moving on, so he can't. He don't have time to be doing the thing that he was doing before with oh, me. So it's like, right. um, I feel like it has gotten better. And like, for the majority of this this school year, my daughter is with him. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So this is giving me my time to get yeah to get your life together. <laughs> together. Right. That's beautiful. I'm just thankful because I didn't look at it at, like that at first. I was looking at it like, uh, -uh. like yeah. I'm supposed to be taking care of my daughter the whole time. Yeah. And you do right. what you because I remember him actually telling me like, shut up. Just I'm just trying to get you to take care like take care of you. Yeah. I got her, but I didn't look at it like that. I was looking at it like, oh no, you're trying to take my baby away from me. Cause yeah. My, other people in my ear like girl like yeah. you better like get uh -huh. in check because we're gonna try to take your baby away i'm like take my kid away that's all i keep hearing throughout the whole process like you yeah. it's so listen taking my child away from me is like taking my soul like so you gotta listen yeah come correct when y'all talking <laughs> in my ear right quick because i'm not playing about my daughter I can only father or not <laughs> like, yeah so I had to go through that. But now we're just like more, mm -hmm. I push out that healthiness to him. Like let him know, like we have to be healthy, you know? Yeah. Lonnie can't see that we're like, even if we're not together, it's okay. Yeah. She needs to see that there's a healthy transition between mm -hmm. us. So that way she's like, oh, even though they weren't together. Yeah. Sure. They was, yeah. yeah at least My I didn't, and daddy. you know. Yeah, absolutely. They, they walked it out. They smoked it out. She's seen that journey. And now she's seeing a whole 360 where it's like, yeah. okay, we don't talk, but we only talk when, you know, it got something mm -hmm. to do with Kalani. And we'd be like, hi, bye, babe. Basically, hey, hey, Walani, boom, bye. Yeah. You know, that's it. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty much what you always desired because you always say you wanted to know who you were as a person, the stuff that you liked. And even as a kid, these are things that you wanted to do, but you just couldn't figure it out right. at that time. So now that you have time to figure it out, do you feel like you're able to like get yourself together, do the things that you enjoy and yeah. still have the, the, you know, the love for your child and do the, do the things with your kid that you always wanted to do as well. Yeah. That's beautiful. I do. Yeah. I feel like this is the most wholeness that I felt in my Aww. whole entire life. Like, I feel like this is the, this is the desire. This yeah. is what I've been praying for. This is how I've been wanting to feel. And I'm so yeah. glad that I made the decision to like say, you know what, mm -hmm. go ahead and take her for a second. Yeah. And, um, go back to that part where um I went to the court system we went back to the court because he took me to the court now mm -hmm. this time he's like I'm gonna get my daughter 
Yeah. Um, so, okay, but we still in joint custody. Yeah. But now he's like, I want to physically get her. Let me see how this physical thing mm. works. And this time I'm like, okay, how how is this going to work? Yeah. Um, I know this is going to reverse roles. Yeah. And I begin to think about this whole transition. And we had like a mediator and she was like, um, y'all pretty much have equal rights. Everything's the same, but physically he'll mm -hmm. just have her for protection. And I remember actually speaking to my dad about the situation. Mm. Actually, I called my dad because I was super emotional about the whole experience. And yeah. I didn't know who to talk to. Couldn't talk to my mama. Couldn't talk. I needed to talk to somebody that understood. Mm. So I talked to my dad and my dad was like, let him, let him get her. Like, let him get her like he was one of the people that actually yeah understand. and i didn't even know my dad was going to do that because my dad didn't even my dad don't even like he's like my baby father you know like yeah how did you even have a kid but you can't <laughs> do that like you know yeah. i've had the child is here cannot do that so he ended up telling me that and i ended up like kind of remembering that that was like months later and i'm like okay mm -hmm. my dad did say something and i remember the lady like you know, you just made one of the best decisions ever in life that no woman come into this city yeah. court and say, hey, let him go ahead and get her yeah, and get you together. Yeah. And she was like, that's breaking generational curses. It is. And I was like, lady, what are you talking about? <laughs> but, and then it you made didn't get sense. it at first. It made so much sense. I clicked right in that moment. And yeah. my when I'm like, lady, what you talking about? I'm like, Oh, mm -hmm. no man. This man, this is a black man at that. Yeah. We don't give these men that authority to do that. Yeah. So we don't. She, when she explained that, I was like, oh, well, that's good. Shoot. I wish, you know, I know my life would be completely different if yeah. I would have stayed with my dad because my dad has that protection. He has that strictness with him, even though he hit me and then yeah. he probably didn't understand you know, how to discipline me. That's all he know was hit because you yeah. know, that's how he was raised. But exactly. that wasn't a good way to introduce that to me because I don't even know who you were. Mm -hmm. But of course, there would have been some more like solid foundations and different things in place, structure, yeah. all types of stuff in place where I didn't have to go out here looking for mm. a man or to love me. But my daughter, she don't have to do that neither yeah. because she has her dad. Yeah, like her absolutely. dad loves her like, you know, Absolutely. so I'm like, okay, I see this as a good thing, you know? Yeah. And that's how I was able to just let go. Yeah. I let go and let mm, God. Surrender. I surrendered. I surrendered. And when I did that, oh my God, my life just transformed into a completely Ooh. different dimension where I was just like, oh my God, like what? I almost don't even want to. I'm like, so... Make sure I don't make a mistake <laughs> because I don't want to go back to that place where I was before. So yeah. I'm just, I'm never going to take myself to where I lost my mind. Like I mm. lost my mind. <laughs> um, wow. And, and then trying to, you know, take care of your daughter while you're going through your own mental health problems. Yes. yes. I think, do you think this is what he was trying to like help you realize in the beginning? But like you say, you had a lot of people in your ear saying he's trying to take her. He's trying to take her. Yeah. So you just couldn't see it. You couldn't think clearly. Yeah. You had too much noise around you at the time. Yes, I did. Yeah. And I realized that at the end, <laughs> it was like at the end when all everything happened, I'm like, I even had a conversation with him. I'm like, mm. you're not even trying to take my child away from me. No. He like, no, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time help me <laughs> help the mind he like exactly that's what I'm trying to do like I'm like yeah. oh I thought you're gonna hurt me so um I'm hurting myself by doing this but yeah um, no it's a learning process yeah. you know you had to learn you were young you know at this age we are impressionable about other people and we believe what they tell us and mm -hmm. we do what's necessary because these are things that the women that were around us had to fight to do Right. But for you, your situation was completely different. You had a, your child's father actually wanted to help you, you know, and, and get your daughter and make sure that you get yourself situated. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure he knew, you know, you growing up, you never really had that, that outlet to like find yourself. Right. Yeah. So that's beautiful. <laughs> I did not. And I always focus myself on 
other people, like yeah. making sure they, they are well established, making sure. Mm -hmm. Like, even with him, like, I was like, brad or that, like, yeah. making sure, like, please don't make sure you're <laughs> good. But, um, yeah, I'm just glad that I did take yeah. the time that I'm taking now mm -hmm. to really embrace Bola Shade. Yeah. So that I could take care of Kalani and Nicole. Like, I mm -hmm. can't. I can't take care of a child without yeah. taking care of myself first. Yeah. Like I gotta make sure I'm mm -hmm. built up before I could just take care of somebody else. And that goes for the whole systematic thing. Yeah. If I wanna help everybody else, help Bola first. Yeah, you gotta help yourself first. And that's what I've realized. I'm like, okay, take a step back, yeah. pour into yourself, pace yourself. Mm. It's not a race. Mm. Um, Love I, that. I, I really did slow down. Yeah. And really, because I was traveling and doing all types of stuff. Because after that, I still had another, you know, another guy. I'm very attracted. Like, people yeah. just come and I'm like, okay, I'm traveling, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. We learning in this journey, trying to figure out, like, hold on, you know, it's kids evolve. Yeah, I make sure this, this, this is a yeah. place. And then I realized, like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take this journey again by myself. You know, I yeah. want to I wanna figure out who I am. Because I see what I'm about to get myself back into yeah. in a cycle. Not saying that you don't really like, you know, love me. I, we love each other to the core. But yeah, I need to figure out who I yes. am. That's, that's important to you right now in that stage of your life. And yeah. it's important to block out anything that's going to stop you from figuring that out for yourself. Because the most important thing that you can do for you is to discover your purpose, your calling, and to be obedient to that message. So trust me, I get it. Yeah. When you got to block it out and focus, <laughs> that's just what it's going to be like. And that's what it's going to look like for you. Yeah. So when we were in the studio, you mentioned that you had a story about co-parenting. Now, was this what you already just shared or was it something completely different? Oh, yeah, that's what the co-parenting okay. yeah. and just encouraging mm. co-parenting to yeah. others who may be going through a similar situation yeah. or may have to, like, spit from their particular person, yeah. partner that they had a kid with, yeah. allowing them to understand that co-parenting is important in yeah. the situation for the kids mental state yeah making sure that they are allowing that kid to be the priority in mm -hmm. the whole situation so that things can get in place you're taking yourself yeah. out of this situation where you're not mm. going bickering and back and forth yeah. and going crazy and you're saying hold up yeah this kid needs to see mm. a healthy yeah formation right so that they can develop a mental where they're strong mm -hmm. and they're like, even though they split apart, I still feel like a family. Yeah. I still feel like yeah. my mama, my right. daddy and me is family. Yeah. And that's how I, how I want to present it to the world and the people that's watching, watching us today. Wow. That even though it may not work out. Cause sometimes I thought I was going to be married to my mm -hmm. um, baby father, but they didn't, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So yeah. now I'm very, like, super, what's the word? I'm super intentional about how my daughter is to be treated mm. during this co-parenting um, situation. Because yeah. I know it's going to always be co-parenting. It's not going to be nothing else other than that. Yeah. So, um, that, so. It's, I'm sorry. No, you're right. So are you encouraging um, women to look at the bigger picture and allow the father to get the kid if they were in a situation where they need to get their mental together? Yes, ma'am. You think that's important? Yes, ma'am. I believe that is super important yeah. because a lot of women lose mm. their self. Like I was that one. I know what it's like to lose yeah. yourself and not know. You think you know yourself? I promise yeah. you, because I was walking like, oh, I know this, I know this. But mm. then in the deep, the deep part of me was like, girl, you don't know yourself. Yeah. Like the other voice in my head was like, girl, you do not know who you is. You still over there just trying to figure <laughs> out everything up. And um, I just feel like it would just give you that time right. to really like 
Go right. into your covenant space to really understand who you are when you allow mm -hmm. the person that wants to be there for your kid yes, to, to be there. there. What would be your advice to a mom that's afraid? Like, what if, what if, what if her kid is all she has right now? Like, she don't have anyone else. She don't have her mom. She don't have her dad. And but she's not mentally together. But she feel like the baby is what's keeping her together right now. But in all actuality, she needs to get her life together. She needs to allow the father to come in and you know, help her have that time to figure out who she is. What would be your advice to a parent like that? So my advice to that mother is mm -hmm. to really pray. Pray to God. Mm -hmm. I love that. Pray to God. I love Seriously, that. because I prayed. I cried yeah. to God. I asked God, please give me the strength mm -hmm. to really... Yeah endure this because it was the hardest and I want to cry right now because Aww. it was the hardest thing I had to do mm -hmm. in my entire life was to let my child mm. go yeah um, and be with her father. and be with her father and I knew it was the right thing yeah God just said let go yeah and let me handle this situation mm. so that I could chill do just my part. It. yeah and he just, Aww. he did his part. He's still doing his part. He's yeah. still making a way to make right. sure that I do the vision that he yeah. created. And I'm just, I, I really, the mothers, yeah. I cry for the mothers. Yeah. And I cry for the fathers because I know what they have to go through as well. Yes. When it comes down to that transition, please mothers, let them fathers take mm. care of their kids because they need they need them just as well as you need them right mm. so figure out a boundary a boundary if you gotta write down a list of you know when this person's gonna have yeah. your child y'all figure out a plan write out a plan for y'all kid so y'all could know yeah. what it's gonna be what yeah communication Mm. It's so important. It is throughout the whole in, um entire process. It if is. you guys decide to split, I don't encourage and split. I like if y'all can stay together, stay together. <laughs> but if not, that's yeah. okay. Right. <laughs> but yeah, um, just make sure that you develop a plan for that kid, mm. so that way, it's just healthy. Yeah. And other than that. I mean, you're just going to begin to just bloom like the flower that you are. You're just going to begin Ooh. to see the light in yourself. Yeah. And you're going to begin to, you know, literally figure out like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm full of Sade. Like, yeah. you're going to be so turned <laughs> up. Like, he's going to be like, oh, this is me. Like, I'm so yeah. happy. You get to enjoy who you are and, and enjoy figuring that out. Yep. Because so many times, like you said, we hold on to what was mm -hmm. meant to happen in a whole different way. Yeah. And I'm glad that you were obedient, obedient to God and just decide to let go. Because like you said, it transformed her whole life. It did. That's it did. beautiful. It did. So, that is so beautiful. And it, we encourage that because I, I 100% agree that sometimes we be too bitter and we want to keep our kids away from the father when in actuality, there sometimes the men are just here to help us grow yes. help us grow help us see how we can grow as parents and mm -hmm. individuals so yep. that's beautiful advice yes. thank you for sharing that <laughs> no problem <laughs> and i i know you say you you know you cried and that was i felt chills in my body as you were saying like i had to let go it was so hard yes it was mm. it was i can't lie it's yeah. the hardest thing that I had to do. I was just yeah. like looking at God, you better cover me. <laughs> oh God, I do this. And look what he's done. He's, he's done nothing but amazing work in your life. He hasn't and failed I, me yet. And yeah. this is just the beginning of my journey. Um, yeah. um what things is about to take place. Mm. Uh, I don't even know what's going on, but I'm yeah. just being obedient. Like you said, right. I'm being obedient to the process. I'm saying yes to God and no to the devil. Yeah. Um, because the devil will try to fool you and put mm. put things in your thought process to mm -hmm. tell you you're not something. But you got to say, mm. no, devil, you are as a liar. Yeah. I am that, you know, and you tell God, yes, and 
every time you say yes to God, there's a door that's opening and there's a door that's unlocking it and the doors are just mm. opening up mm. into the heaven gates that is yes. overflowing. The angels start guarding. I don't know, but y'all, I'm telling y'all, <laughs> you just listen yes. to God and you say yes to God, I promise you, wow. this is a guaranteed statement yeah. that he's going to make sure that you're fine. He's going to make sure you're good. Right. He's going to make sure you're protected, guarded. Anything that is of God is great and is destined to make sure that you are good. Yes. Nothing that is of God that's in the devil space, let that say no to that stuff. Yeah. Even if you've got to be tempted to something that isn't of God, just 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 repent or just be like, yeah. God, you know, repent. just get me out of that. Like, yeah. get, get me out For of that box so that I can get myself <laughs> together. We ain't perfect. We're not. And we have to learn how to talk to God when we're in tough situations like this. And I think when it comes to a decision like this, God is your best resource yes. because your mind will play all type of tricks on you. No, I'm not letting my child go with their father. He's this, he's yep. that. Your mind would, would literally talk you out of a good opportunity yep. of what God has in store for you moving forward. So yes, ma'am. Oh my God. Thank you for sharing that. That yeah. was super beautiful. Yes. Thank Everything you. about it was from the beginning to the end was just really enjoyable hearing you talk about your story. Is there anything that you would like to add on that you feel like you didn't get to share? Um, I feel like mm -hmm. my last remarks is just, I always say do everything with love. Yeah. Um, and just be yourself be mm. authentic mm. to the process mm -hmm. don't let yourself go for anything follow mm. the vision follow your heart yes. allow the spirit to guide you in the, mm. the direction that you need to flow in so that way you can understand right the process mm. ask god for permission um, one of the biggest things that we don't do is ask God for permission. God right. is going to give you the answer every time you ask. Yes. Um, he gave me this scripture, Matthew 7, to tack on in this season. Um, ask and you shall receive. Knock, the door mm. will be open to you. Seek and you will find. And um, that's just for me in this season because yeah. he knows that I'm a big person that doesn't yeah. ask. I don't right bother people so yeah, it's hard he's like, to act. he's like make sure you uh yeah. put that out there to right. let them know to do the same so uh -huh. um i encourage you all to do that and just you know even though we're going through this journey and we're going through spiritual warfare mm. just remember to, to tackle your mind back to the spirit yeah. and allow it to do its thing that it's going to do regardless yeah. of what anything that is trying to attack it can't form, it can't prosper because God is right there making sure that it doesn't do yeah. that exact thing. So I enjoyed this so much. Oh I'm my so God, glad. let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> this is, she you. was phenomenal. I mean, this was Thank great. You. The knowledge that she shared when it comes to God and how important it is to have God in their life. I mean, we have a lot of moms come on, but they don't talk about that relationship with God. So yeah. for you to incorporate that into your parenting yeah. and co-parenting relationship is beautiful. And yeah. I I hope it inspires yes. somebody or, you know, a mom to be like, I'm going to let my child go with her father. As you should. And I'm going to pray about it first. <laughs> Please pray. Yes. <laughs> pray about it. Yes. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on, thank you. sharing your story. It was really beautiful. And I know you have a lot more to go through because your daughter is only six. Yes. And, she is. you know, she's only going to get older and bigger, and you'll have more to share with people, more knowledge, more wisdom to share. So, yeah. I can definitely tell what God is doing for you. And I love that. I, I love that, girl. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Please let everyone know where they can find you at on social media. Um, okay. And, you know, if you have any comments or if you need to reach out to her, if someone has any, you know, you, you know, just say, for instance, a mom come on and she like, oh, I want to speak to her. 
because I'm going through the same thing. Are you open to that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. She's open yeah. to it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. leave your information where people can find you. Okay. Yep. You can find me on Instagram, um, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, all social media platforms at Fola Shade Speaks. Um, that's mm -hmm. F O L A. S P E A K S Fola Shade speaks. Mm -hmm. I am on all platforms <laughs> because I have to be on all platforms yeah. to understand the <laughs> algorithm and things and what's going on. So yes, please make sure that you all follow me there. And if you all need me for any type mm -hmm. of anything when it comes down to just speaking and just getting any yeah. type of advice, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I have it. I'll have it set up on my page. Uh, my website is folashadespeaks dot com as well. Yeah. Um, you can find me there and yeah. check me out, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'll make there. sure I drop all the links. So I have one more question for you: Is your name mixed with your mom and your dad? No, actually, is I was named after a singer, and then my dad just was like, "That's that's perfect because it's okay. Nigerian. It's Fola Oh, Shade. so her name is Fola Shade. Mm -hmm. She's a Nigerian yep. singer." Yep. Okay, I'm gonna have to go. We're gonna have to go check her out. Yep. <laughs> Ola Shade is a singer, and then I yeah. was named after that. And my name is it means honor um, with the crown, and it's one of the yeah. most special names in Nigerian. Yeah. Um, in Nigeria, I'm sorry. Okay. Where I'm gonna go to the tribe and actually visit <laughs> to figure out like where, where am I rooted from? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Nice, yep. nice. Yep. Listen, and you, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Cut on the notifications so you can get, you know, notifications for when the next video drops. Yep. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and yes. share because yes. she did a wonderful job. This was a beautiful interview. Yes. And we look forward to hearing some of your wonderful feedback on this. Thank you. <laughs>